Hey guys, welcome back to Donnie Boy 73. This is Small Engines Questions and Answers, video number 89. And today is Friday, February 24th, 2012. So welcome back everybody. And first of all, I want to thank everybody for their tips on the MIG welder. Some people offered some tips in their comments. I really appreciate that because I've only started MIG welding a little while ago. I got a few lessons from Get Bent Metal and that's about it. So it's going to be a learning process and I welcome any tips you guys may have to offer. And in the video the other day, I forgot to show you that the tip here just comes off by screwing it out. And then you can replace the tip over here. So that's another thing that I wanted you guys to see about this welder. This tip here probably actually needs to be replaced at this point. And then you just screw it back on. Don't put this on too tight because you will not be able to get it out without having the whole diffuser come out as well. This is supposed to separate from this part. And in the video people mentioned that the cylinder should be secured and they're correct. I only had it set up like this to make that video to show it to you guys. I'm actually going to build a welding rack for this welder here and for my stick welder here. So it's going to be one rack that's going to hold both welders. And the cylinder is also going to be chained up to the rack itself. And also another tip too is I'm going to disconnect the cylinder from the welder even though I'm not using it and store it where it's in a safer place than this. If the valve and the regulator did break off the cylinder apparently it can shoot off like a missile so you got to be extra cautious don't keep it near the heat and keep it where if it falls it's not going to get damaged but the best thing is to keep it tied up or chained up to something secure. And when I build that rack, I plan on making videos as to how I'm making it. So keep your eyes open, you're going to see some videos on that in the near future. Another tip I want to offer you guys today is if you have a snowblower with a metal chute, you may want to consider painting the inside if the paint is all chipped up. Because what happens is if it's rusted in there, the snow doesn't slide out as easily as it could. I've mentioned this in other videos, but I thought I'd show it to you guys again because some people never saw that. Anyways, I painted this chute with a brush. I find I can put on more paint than using a spray can and it goes on nice and thick and it lasts a bit longer than a spray can because you got rocks hitting that paint all the time sometimes. And if your augers are nicely painted, the snow's not going to stick on them as much. It's going to work a bit better actually. You can even paint the impeller in the back over there. And this is the paint I use. And I always make sure that I use a gloss paint when I do this. I find the snow slides much better off gloss paint than if you use flat paint. And this one is oil based. I always use oil based paint on my metal. And not only does it help the snow, but it does prevent your machine from rusting prematurely. A question I got the other day from a YouTuber is, is it possible for a chainsaw to get hydro locked? He said his chainsaw was stored for a while on its side and he's wondering if that could cause it. Well, the answer to that is yes, it could happen. I rarely see it, but it is possible. And sometimes it may not just necessarily be because it's on its side. What could cause that is if your carburetor is a bit defective, like for example the needle inside the carburetor, or if your gas tank is not venting, it's creating pressure, it's driving fuel up to the carburetor, and then it's leaking into the engine really slow over a long period of time, and thus it's filling the crankcase full of gas. So if that happens to your chainsaw, it could very well be hydrolocked. You're going to go to start it, and you won't be able to turn it over because there's so much fluid in the crankcase and the cylinder that there's no room for air and the piston to move up and down. So if that happens too, you may want to take the cover off, take the spark plug off, make sure that the switch is in the off position, and when you pull it over, all the fuel is going to come out of the spark plug hole. That's why I say it's really important to have the switch in the off position because if there's any ignition whatsoever, it could ignite all the fuel coming out of the chainsaw on fire. Always have safety in mind when you do this, and if you do have this problem with your chainsaw over and over, then replace the carburetor kit. I recommend that you get a full carburetor kit with all the hardware, which includes the needle valve. Another question I got the other day from a YouTuber, when you adjust your carburetor and you turn in the screws, does that make the engine run leaner? Well, the answer to that is yes. When you turn in the screws, you're allowing less fuel to get into the engine. When you turn them out, you're allowing more fuel to go in. That's the case in most instances. I have seen some carburetors which were the opposite. But on most equipment that I work on, that's the case. For example, this little carburetor here, which is a Zama carb, probably from a chainsaw. You can see the H screw here, which is the high speed and the low speed screw on the left. 
Well, when I turn out these screws, it will run richer. If I turn them in, it will run leaner. And on this old carburetor from a snowblower, which is adjustable by the way, if I turn in this screw, it runs leaner. If I turn it out, it runs richer. And you may have a carburetor on your snowblower that is non-adjustable, then you don't need to worry about it. And while I'm on the topic of carburetors, somebody emailed me the other day. They told me they had an Echo grass trimmer. They had seen some videos on YouTube where somebody was adjusting the screws on an Echo grass trimmer. And that person was wondering why they don't have any screws on their carburetor. Well, the reason why the YouTuber that emailed me about his carburetor not having screws is because his piece of equipment is newer than the one he saw on YouTube, which had adjusting screws. Most new grass trimmers today do not have adjusting screws. Personally, I liked having adjusting screws on carburetors because it gave you more leeway if something was going wrong. But that's how things are nowadays, so we just got to live with it. It doesn't mean that they're not good. Most of the time they run really good. So it's just a matter of keeping your fuel clean and making sure that they're put away properly and that the carburetor kit's in good condition all the time. So it's not a big deal if you don't have adjusting screws on your carburetor. The only screw you're going to have on your carburetor on your newer piece of equipment is the idle setting screw. And I'll show you one on the carburetor right now. So let's pretend this carburetor was unadjustable so it wouldn't have any adjusting screws. You would still have a screw somewhere to adjust the idle speed. All that this screw does is adjust the speed at which your engine will idle. It does not adjust the air or fuel mixture in your carburetor. So don't be afraid, if you want it to idle faster, you turn it in. If you want it to idle slower, you turn it out. Only adjust this when your engine is warm. Because sometimes it may not idle good when it's cold, and then when it's warm, it's going to idle much faster. Some people have been asking me what should they keep in stock if they're going to start a small engine business. Well, what you could keep in stock is a lot of carburetor kits. Now, if you're not sure which carburetor kits to get, what you can do is when you repair something, and you need to order a carburetor kit, then order two, use one for what you're repairing, and then you have an extra one. You don't want to buy a whole bunch of things that you're never going to use because it's a lot of money to spend that's going to be sitting on your shelves. You may also want to make a collection of fasteners, nuts and bolts and washers and all that. Get yourself some good tools. You may want to keep in stock the popular sizes of fuel lines and make sure to buy the fuel line in 25 or 50 foot rolls because it's much cheaper than if you go and buy one or two feet at a time. And you may want to keep a lot of spark plugs in stock, like for example the Champion RJ19LM, which you're going to use on snowblowers and lawnmowers. And you may also want to keep some NGK BPMR 7A spark plugs. You're going to use a lot of these on grass trimmers and chainsaws. There's a whole lot of other stuff that you're going to realize over time that you need for your small engine business. But what I recommend so you don't have to spend so much money right off the bat is like I said, when you need to buy something, just buy two or three, use one for the repair, and then you have a little stock building up for yourself. Sometimes I get people asking me if I have a video on a certain thing. Well, what I'm going to show you today from my computer is an easy way to know if I have a video on what you're looking for. The best way to do this is go to my channel. Under any video, you're going to see Boy 73 Just click on that. And now you're going to be on my channel page. And if you go in the top right corner over here, it says search channel. And just go and click in the search box. If you're looking for anything in regards to chainsaws, just type in chainsaw, click enter. Now anything that's got chainsaw in the title or description is going to come up in the search. And in this example, it said search results for chainsaw 235. So that means there's 235 videos that has something to do with chainsaws and then you can just scroll down through them. Remember to just type in keywords. So again, I want to thank you guys for watching this week's Q&A. I want to thank all you guys for your comments and also for offering some handy tips. I appreciate it and I'm sure that all the other YouTubers watching as well do. And if it's your first time watching, make sure to subscribe. I have a lot of videos on small engine repairs. Just go to my channel and you can type in there what you want to look for. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next Friday. Have a great weekend.